Looks like we got our first PG mission, everyone. Change of heart. I need to have something returned to its rightful place, and I'd like you to help with that. I'll be waiting on the bridge in Riverside. Bruno. Oh, that's the grumpy man we saw looking looking over the bridge. Yes, boom, next one is up. Hmm, the scent's still not gone. I'll take the next board. Oh, it's saying this, we've got one more. For speedy mission. I know, Van, don't worry. The big red exclamation mark is telling me you've got another mission, my dude. I get it. Here he is. He was didn't want to talk to us earlier. Hello. Maybe he'll give us a fishing rod. Ooh, one can hope. Hey there, old man. You Bruno? Now, you see, Aaron, that is actually an old man, not Van. Who are you? A Spriggan looking for work. I'm with Arkwright Solutions. Mind if we talk about the job? The job's exactly as I described in the posting. He's a bit grumpy. I'm getting old, so I figured it was about time for me to sort things out before I pass on. I want you to get this thing back to its proper owner. Bruno drew an item out of his pocket. Oh, that's cute. A locket? Wait, this photo is of someone else, isn't it? That's right, this locket belongs to a stranger. I used to make my living as a thief. Well, that took a, <laughs> took a turn long ago. I stole this. Just to be clear, I don't do that anymore. Life's taking its turn for me. I did not expect that. I've actually heard about you, Bruno. You were a pretty famous thief. Rumor has it no lock has had been invented you couldn't break into. Ooh. The, all, the, all the legends are from when you were young, so everyone thought you'd given it up. I guess the rumor was true. Oh, you know me. You could have said so before I bothered explaining them. <laughs> uh, yes. But whatever. It's been 20 years since I stole this locket. It ain't the kind of thing you get a good money out of, so I kept it with me instead of selling it. So why'd you nick it then? Honestly, some people. After hearing some rumours about you, Spurrigan, I figured it'd be better to see if you could return it for me before I could just pitch in, pitch it in the trash. So, how about it? Will you take the job? Goddamn right. Oh, Grey and Chaos. No law. Well, it's, it, 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 every time he does this, it says there's no option for law. I pick one that sounds bad, and then it's all law. So, I don't know. Yes, I accept your quest. <laughs> Boom. Sure, we'll take the job. Obvious question, but do you know where the owner is? <laughs> that would that'll make this so easy, my dude. I want you to return the locket to the boy in the photograph. Of course, it's been 20 years, so I'm sure he's that much older by now. Okay, so that make him in his late 20s? Yes, like Van. Yes. So where is he? How should I know? Finding that out is your job. Give us something, my dude. Oh dear. Can't even throw me a bone here? I stole it when I was hitting the Maserati Hotel's guest rooms over in Siden. It was quite the event at the time, from what I hear. The hotel staff might know more about it, so try asking them. I like that place. It's a very, very cool looking hotel. Okay, so should we find the hotel who might know about the load? Oh my. <laughs> Read. Okay, so we should find hotel staff who might know about the hotel's history. I assume you can handle it from there. Let me know once you've returned it. I'll send over your payment then. My dude, you vanished into thin air. There he goes. Yes, our next stop is the hotel inside him. He's literally just, he's just vanished. Let's go look into this. Oh, he's a master thief, isn't he? That makes sense. Understood. Commencing mission. I mean, no wonder he's a master thief. If he can literally just phase out of reality like that, that's a very strong super. Let's go, fairy. In this one, yes. Off we go. This is a very cool looking hotel. Oh, I was going to show you it, but no, cutscene. All right, here's the Maserati. But 20 years ago, Bruno stole a locket from somebody here, right? Let's try and find someone who was around back then. Yeah, but we can't just walk up and ask. That'd be a, a bit suspicious. Best course of action would be finding an employee and sort of working our way out toward that slowly. Yeah, they definitely suspect he was up here. Look at this hotel. This is just a lobby. God damn it, snazzy. I love the waterfalls. Very impractical, but I like it. Hello there, my darling. Hey, sorry to interrupt. We're from Arkwright Solutions. And we're trying to dig up some info on the case that happened here. Do you remember any instances of theft here at the hotel around the 20th? Is she even over 20? We don't know. <laughs> theft? Let me think. I've been working here for a while, but I don't remember hearing about anything like that. Really? Huh. We did I have a major incident here 20 years ago, but I don't think that's what you're referring to. Oh, what happened? <clears throat> God, I need to do that because I'm still dying from the last episode. <gasps> well, I prefer to keep this on a down low, but if it helps the investigation. 20 years ago, the hotel was attacked by bad people. Again, I'm not going to say the word because YouTube's like naughty. What a 
Bad guy attack right in the middle of town? Yes, it claimed the life of Senator Taylor and his family. The staff at the time had no idea what to make of it. Some of us thought it was some sort of conspiracy. Man, the whole family just got wiped out like... I guess this is the, this is the depressing quest of the mission, of the lot. Well, we're not 100% sure. The government quickly swooped in and kept all the information on... Of course they did, bloody governments. In truth, we still don't know if there were any survivors among his family. Oh, but now that I think about it, Senator Polanski may know more about the incident. He and Taylor were colleagues, I believe. Alright, thanks. I'll chat him up. Oh, you bet, you, you bet I will. I'm going to whiz him up. Bruno stole, said he stole somebody's locket. Maybe that had something to do with the bad guy attack too. <laughs> yeah, it's got me suspicious too. But let's do some more digging before we jump to conclusions. Is everyone in the in the picture dead then? That'd be depressing. Hello there, Mr. Senator. Bring up topics. Let me ask you something. Let me say something. Chatterbox, you over 15 topics. <gasps> Achievement! Yay. Hey there, sorry to butt in. We're from Arkwright Solutions. And we're digging around for some info on an incident that happened here. here. Oh god, I can't, I can't read today. Mind if we pull you aside for a sec? I see. Well, yes, I don't mind. May I step away for a bit, Jennifer? Or to her the door, but no. What? No. Oh my god, chair, why can't you have to suck so much? Hang on. Of course, I'll be here enjoying my imaginary, definitely not here tea. Yes, she's like me, I see tea all the time, even if it's not real. An instant, you say. What might you be referring to? And what would I know about it? It's about Senator Taylor, that incident 20 years ago. Who told you? I have my sources. <laughs> Just literally the girl there that you probably heard. Anyway, I want something to deliver to his next of kin, if he's got any. Actually, just make sure. Can you confirm this guy in the photo here is Taylor? It's been an age since I've seen that face. That's him. Yes. Does that mean what I think it means? Bruno wasn't a thief. He was a bad guy. Wow, that, wow, this is taking a turn. <laughs> Am I fill us in on what happened that day? Well, if you were to help your investigation, I suppose I can tell you what I know. Taylor was a fellow Republican Party member. He and I weren't particularly close, but I respected him as a political ally. He was especially active on the subject of race relations. He had a flair for these passionate, fiery speeches in Parliament. Wow, so he was really big. Yeah, but right at his highest, he got wiped out just like that. By a government official, because he got hush-hushed. Honestly. I'll never forget that night. He was staying here for a family vacation. They came to the hotel in the dead of night and gunned him down in his sleep. Bruh. Me thinks Bruno is a douche. I heard his son miraculously survived, but both he and his wife were killed. Man, I had no idea. That's just horrible. I remember hearing about requests like that. Why would anyone do so? Keep that on the hush. No one do such a thing. Do you know where the kid is now? I'm afraid I don't, sorry. But he was good friends with a man named Huck. <gasps> Huck! If memory serves, he may be able to help. Oh, maybe he's one of the ones playing poker. Last I heard, he was living in Old Town. If his address hasn't changed since then, you can find him there. Wait, is that who I? Yup, our favorite old bar fight selection. <laughs> if I had to bet. 50 Mira says he's at the loyally right now. Ah, you're acquainted. Good, good. That should make things easier. Best of luck with your investigation. Taylor's son deserves closure on that terrible, terrible day. Why does that have to be Huck? I don't trust Huck, okay? He's a perv. He actually is. Oh, that's not me being, like, funny. He's actually a pervert. Go, go, go. He flirted with Arne the moment she stepped in the door. <laughs> Come on. Ah, control. Why is stuck? You didn't. I don't need to, uh, bathhouse, do I? No, we're all full. It could be... So, neighbor. Could be you, I reckon. I suspect because you're like, you're old, but you're not old old, you know what I mean? Hey, look, let me ask the same. Let me ask you something. Hey there, you folks look pretty glum. What's going on? We're in the middle of investigating a politician for a job, you see. Now I understand. You've left no stone unturned. you dug up a lot of stuff meant to stay buried. Anyway, yes, Taylor and I were good friends. We debate about all sorts of things over drinks, like policies to diminish racial disparity and such. You know, the typical drink conversation. Well, that's pretty surprising. That's because Huck manages a well-established investment firm. This Huck? This Huck runs an investment firm. 
I'm surprised. People like that always have connections with the top brass calling. I just assumed you were some random sauna fan. That's amazing. <laughs> That's okay. I'd rather it stay like that. I prefer how people treat me when they don't know. Back on track. This guy's son is still alive, yeah? You got any idea where he went? That's how I do. His name is Roboderick. Don't know why I pronounce it like that, but whatever. After the attack, I believe he went to live with some relatives in Altair. As for what he's been up to these days, I have no clue. Gotcha. Back to looking for someone who does them. Actually, one more question while I still got you here. Do you know what happened to the culprit? Culprits, actually. Well, I do. There were two of them. They went on the run after the, fa after the fact, but they got... But, but, oh, I can't speak. They got caught sometime later. Their testimony suggested that there had been some friction for a while. They mentioned something about an intruder letting the kid get away, and they thought someone was selling them out. What I understand, Roderick's own recollection of what happened is pretty hazy. I'm curious about this intruder letting the kid escape. Or maybe that's Bruno. Mm -hmm. Well, at least he made it out alive, so that's good. If he did, then... Oh, now that I think about it, I might know somebody who would have an idea about Roderick's whereabouts these days. You should talk to the editor-in-chief of the Tyrell Times. She was all over that case, the whole case back in the day. With any luck, she might still be keeping up with it. Wouldn't hurt to ask at the very least. <gasps> Marielle. No. no, Marielle's not the head <laughs> editor. God forbid. Actually, no, I like Marielle. Anyway, good to know. Hopefully, we'll save us the trouble sniffing out the info ourselves. Thank you. Oh, you won. Hey, I won't say no to gratuity. I think some milk gelato will do just fine as a thanks after a long sloak. Sure your thing. I remember to hook you up with some later. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's head to the Tyrell Times. So it's not you then. I could have thought it'd be you. To the Tyrell Times, ladies and gentlemen. Boom. This is seriously taking a turn. <laughs> I did not think it would be Let's do this. bad people and thefts and people dying and families being wiped out. Hello. Let me ask Sam. Let me ask you something. Hey there, Chief. Got an assignment right now. I was hoping we could talk to you about. You got a minute? Van Arkwright, we meet again. This is someone else that doesn't like Van, probably. You know when a good reporter doesn't give up her scoops without a good reason? Tell me what brings you here and we'll take it from there. Now, I think you'll be pretty interested in this one. It's got to do with a, that bad guy case from a couple decades ago. I'm told you about. Told you know about. You see... I see someone's done their homework. That we did. Definitely only your keep on this assignment of yours, I see. All right, I'll bite. I'll tell you what I know. Ah, I love it. But in exchange, you have to promise to report back on how everything turns out once it's over. Deal? Yeah, not really. Why? Think of turning this into an article, Sam? More or less, certainly has the makings for a story worth bringing to light. If it turns out I'm wrong, no problem. I'll keep it to myself. Works for me. You got yourself a deal. Sorry, my, my camera light went out then. I thought, you know, hasn't died, is it? No, it's still working. That was weird. Don't, it's not meant to do that. <laughs> so as it happens, I'm still investigating that case, even if it's never been made public. Partly, it's to bring justice for the surviving family, but also to keep the pressure on anti-immigrant groups that would do such a thing. Suffice it to say, I'm well aware of what Roderick's up to these days. You are? What is he doing? Once he grew up, Roderick became a young entrepreneur, and a promising one at that. He travels around cutting business deals, but he keeps Edith as his home base. I've interviewed him on a number of occasions over the years, not just to survive with the case, but also to discuss his business ventures. Sounds like an impressive guy. Must have inherited his dad's ambition to make a difference. Yes. I can try to call him on his mobile terminal and arrange a meeting for you if you'd like. I can't make any promises, but do you want me to try? Hell yeah. Sure, I'd appreciate it. This is going incredibly well, I must admit. Hi, Roderick. How are you? This is Edwin Chief Sullivan from the Tyrell Times. I wanted to ask... Is it a yes? You're all set. Ooh, luckily for you, he just so happens to be nearby. He said he'll wait for you later at the terrace over the station. Awesome, that worked out perfectly. There's more. There's something else he was hoping you two could do for him in return. Destroy Bruno. Oh yeah, I'm cool with that. He wants you to bring your client, the owner of the locket, with you when you meet him. Uh, I guess I can see why you'd want to meet him. But I don't know if Bruno will be willing to do that. We won't know for sure until we ask him. We'll bring it up when we give him our progress report. Fingers crossed. Do it. Do it, ladies and gentlemen. Good luck, Spriggan. Make sure you make sure to come to me. Talk to me when once everything's I can't speak today. Clearly I can't. I my brain's fried. Yeah, yeah, I will. A deal's a deal. 
I'm not telling her anything. I'm not giving her any info. All right, let's ring the guy up and get this show on the road. Yo, Bruno, what's up? Hey, this is Van Art Cry from Van Art Cry Solutions. I wanted to ask. Great, see you then. Ooh. How did, maybe it's gonna be maybe it's actually gonna be quite emotional. Woman's gonna have closure and he's gonna apologize for what he did. That'd be sweet. Didn't say much. For now, we're just linking up at the Riverside Bridge. We'll fill him in on everything once we meet him in person. Okay, sounds good to me. Let's go. Beep, 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 beep. Let's roll, Lizardman. This is probably the I'll closest. Go. I'll get out. Where are you, Bruno? I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you now. I'm coming. I'm coming. Don't take that out of context. Probably shouldn't. Nah, I'm gonna stop right there before I ruin this. I was hoping to hear from you, Spriggan, but I figured it wouldn't be until you'd returned the locket. What's this about? First off, I wanna make sure we're on the same page. Let me give you a progress report on our investigation. All right then, let's hear it. Then explain what they learned about the bad guy attack on the Mas Maserati Hotel. Finally, they told Brudo they managed to get in contact with Senator Taylor's son, Roderick. Well, well, you soon picked up the trail, quick. I know, I'm amazing. I am actually amazing. Okay. You said you robbed the hotel, but there's photos of two of the bad guy attack victims. Thought you might have been the bad guy behind the attack. But I've changed my mind since then. My guess is you just did exactly what you said. Robbed the hotel. <laughs> just so happened that you were in the middle of it when the place was hit by t bad guys yet. That was close. I almost slipped up. Hmm. Those kinds of coincidences only occur in stories. But that ridiculous scenario is exactly what happened that day. We heard it right then. Hmm. Then the someone that intervened and saved Roderick's life was... Ooh, good for you, Bruder. Make it sound more honourable than it was. I wasn't out to save a kid. My mind wasn't on all the dead people at the time. I thought that, hey, with people dying all around me, no one would miss a thing or two. That's not, that's not very nice, is it, Mr. Bruno? You're not a very nice person, are you? Man, aren't you a nice... My god, me and Van are so sick. Why is it lagging? Me and Van are so similar, my god. Man, aren't you a nice fella? Guess the locket's one of those missing things. Even then, Roderick still wants me to meet wants to meet you. Wait, what? He asked us to bring you to him when we hand over the locket, actually. That's ridiculous! How do you want me to face him now? But you're worried about him. Why is it lagging? But nothing's happening. Nope. Nope, this is just chugging super hard. That's why you hired us to return the locket to the boy from back then. If you ask me, you should stop sulking about and just talk to him. Damn it, it's not that easy. He just needs one more push. It'd be best if he was honest about being the guy that stole the locket. But if he doesn't want up, then maybe he could go under the guise of being someone else. Ooh, ooh, that's intriguing. Ooh. Ooh! I, I have no idea what I pick. So either he can... I mean, either way he's gonna meet him, right? That's how, that's how it generally goes. I think... It will be better for him as a person if he... He's actually himself and he can get closure and he can apologize or whatever. Pretending to be someone else... It make it easier on him, but it doesn't solve the underlying issues at play. You know what I mean? So I'm going to go meet him as a thief. That's what I'm going to pick. Sounds, it's probably the nicer option. So, yes. Man up to your mistakes, my dude. Best to stop the lies and just present himself as the thief. Stop making excuses and do it already. Just like that. <laughs> Don't know what Roderick's out to get from this meeting with you. But the worst that can happen will be you reaping what you've sown. You need to own up to your mistakes, my dude. Mm. Before you, you know, pass on, as you said. You're right. If I'm going to go this far, I might as well have the courage to take that last step. Boom. I think that's the right decision. Sounds like the, the nicer option of the two. Could you guys be... We're from Art Cried Solutions. Don't know why I'm doing that, but... I can't stop now. You're Roderick, I take it. That's right. I'm the only survivor of the, of the bad guy attack you've been investigating. There was only a kid at the time. Ooh, time for heart to heart. Let me start by giving you this locket back then. Van handed the locket over to Roderick. There you go, sir. Thank you very much. I'll be sure to treasure it. I take it you're the one that had it this whole time. Yeah, his name's Bruno. 
He's the man who stole it from the hotel you were staying at 20 years ago. He's also a bit of a douche, just to warn you. Hmm. Then you're the thief who just so happened to target our room the same day those bad guys came for us. Heard you told the police that you didn't remember anything at the time. I thought you'd have forgotten me. Oh, I would never forget you. Then why did you cover for me? No, I suppose it doesn't matter at this point. I'm... I'm sorry. May not have been the man that killed your parents, but I still let him die. You see, he needed this. You can't just cover it up, okay? You've got to be honest with your feelings. If you want revenge, I'll take it. You can even turn me into the cops if you want. I won't resist. Hmm. Hmm. Bruno. For 20 years, I've wanted to meet you. For 20 years, I wanted to say something to you. Thank you. Thank you for saving my life. But what When I woke up that night, the first thing I saw was two men standing by my parents' bed. Both of them drenched in blood. It was too late for my parents. I was so scared that I couldn't move. It would have been too late for me too if you hadn't appeared then. You didn't hesitate. You looked me in the eyes and immediately took my hand and led me out of the room. I'll admit, I noticed you pocketed mum's locket as you did. You were still a thief at the end of the day. How could you look at that scene and steal, steal from them? My god. But you still saved my life. You told me not to tell anyone about you after you left. And I listened. You were my hero. Still are. Ah, oh, bless. That's why I never told the police or my relatives about you. You've been my secret this whole time. Tough not to crack, huh? You... You idiot! I'm no hero. I just didn't think I was going to chance on a murder scene and I led you away without even thinking about it. Then you had to go and thank me after that. You sounded so pitiful. That one thing has continued to haunt me all these years. So I started making more and more mistakes until I finally gave up thieving. Green shot. Really? I'm very sorry about that. Bah! Get a smile off your face. But I guess this, that means it's thanks to you that I was able to change. I should be thanking you, not the other way around. <laughs> Makes me genuinely happy to hear I was able to do something for you after everything you did for me. This is uplifting after how depressing it started. You sure are a piece of work, oh man. But that wraps up that job. The party kept Bruno and Roderick company as the two of them talked for a while longer. Eventually, they saw Roderick off, who, as much as he wished he could have stayed, was forced to leave for a business meeting. Damn. Well, I'm going to head off. I'm sure to wire you your money later. Charles. Hmm. Uh, listen, this is all thanks to you guys. It's alright, man. It's alright. What's that? Can you say that again? I didn't quite hear you. Baff! <laughs> Forget it. See ya. Van, stop playing with the clients. Boo -ba -doo -ba -doo. Damn, that, that took a turn. Oh, very happy. That makes me happy to him. Not everyone can be honest with themselves. That's why it was the right decision. I'm happy with that. You're right about that one. After Bruno departed, Van contacted Editor in Chief Sullivan to update her on what happened. She concluded that there was no reason to publish what they had learned, as there was no real threat to the public. Also, that, yeah, that would have been really dirty to publish that, to be honest. And so it was that, unbeknownst to the world, the story of the former thief and the locket he stole came to a happy end. Finally, a happy one! These have only been happy so far. Last chapter, they were all depressing or brutal, so this that is nice. Care of that. Boom! Nailed it! What do we get for that? That's not bad, it's not bad. What do we get for it? What do we get, Legend? I'm assuming grey, right? Law, see that? It's law again! <laughs> law wasn't an option, and yet it's law. So, whatever. We're so close to grey's like one off. I don't think we're gonna get the chaos end. I don't have it in me to be a douche, okay? Unless they really deserve it, I'm too nice. Oh! Oh, it sounds like I got mail. Who from? It's from the CID. They've got another job for us. Of course they do. Oh, look at that. Memorial Park Extermination. We've recently received reports of a dangerous monster in the area. Depths of Dirk Memorial Park. Monster unidentified. Requesting upright solutions handle this immediately. Well, God, but... Well, we're not going to do that just yet, because there's one more full speechy mission to do. Typical monster extermination gig, looks like. We'll be heading to Dirk Memorial Park. Ooh, I know. Oh, is that a new area? Oh, I've never been to the Memorial Park before. It's on the outskirts of the city, so we'll have to drive ways to get there. Wish they picked some place closer. Hold up. What's for the extra line breaks? Wait. Yes. Make sure you treasure all of your memories. Are we... 
I want to know Van's backstory. We saw I when I was editing one of my previous videos, it had a little like three images in like a split second of Van's childhood. It was him with Kincaid in the lane, and they were looking at him sad. Something bad happened. I want to know what it is. Hmm. Uh, that guy's a pain in the neck sometimes. I'm assuming this is Kincaid, right? Um, so what are we gonna do? Well, the pace decent enough, I guess. I think snatching it out of the gills grubby paws is the play. <laughs> we're gonna need to take the car though, so let's get back to the garage once we're done with everything else. Boom. So that is a new area, I'm assuming, right? Yes. Oh, there's a... Oh, because it's no longer important. <gasps> yes, yeah, so let's have a look. Taking off now. Boo, 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 boo. I'm assuming... Don't we get an extra free time for doing this? I think. Hello everyone, it's me from the future. I've just recorded the episode after the one you're seeing tonight. I know, weird. And I unlocked an extra a connection point. And because I dunk in case, which you'll see in the next episode. And because this is the only thing left to do before we move on, I can't justify the entire episode just for Dingo. So I'm gonna add this onto the end of this episode that you're seeing. Uh, so yes, let's go see Mr. Dingo Brad. A walk around side end. It's been a while since I just wandered around on my own for a bit. Maybe I hit upside in. I've got some downtime on my hands after all. Just hope I don't run into any trouble. Now I'm ho I'm hoping that I don't carry a bonding event over to the night time. So I don't know who will be available, but let's go for it. Let's go see Dingo. Yes. Maybe do. Van's group decided to take a short break. They will split up so they can spend their free time as they please. Ah, there it is. Car dealer. I want. Can we please buy a car for Van? That's what I want. <laughs> yup, that's Luxrix. Excess Express all the way. Don't think I could handle it. No, no, the resist, resist the temptation, Van. I only got eyes for Inga. <laughs> Can you re really say you love your car when you haven't modeled the hell out of it? <laughs> Aren't you? Oh, <gasps> Mariel! Hello. Hey, look who it is. Bumped into each other in Longport too, didn't we? We have a knack for doing that. Yay, Mariel's it. I really like Mariel. Okay, everyone knows this. Well, what timing? I've been looking for you. Is it true that you and your company had a hand in resolving the incident? May I ask a few questions, please? I like your account of the events. Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down there, eh? What we're talking about here, you might be mixing me up. We booked it back to Edith after you saw us, so I don't think we had any part in that. No part. I have reports that you were at the scene. Don't be dumb, please. We've also heard that you travelled to Crail Village shortly before that attack there. Uh -oh. There's something about you. Something that makes these incidents pop up wherever you go. It's got to be a correlation. Yeah, no, we aren't even. We weren't even there. Man, she's noisy. Nosy. How the hell does she know? Dingo. Oh shit! Is that Dingo over there? Wait, really? Hey, you're not getting me that shit again. No, not. I thought she swore. Then she didn't. You're trying to throw me off the scent, just like you did with Maxi. Yeah, we we did do that. I'm sorry. No, seriously, I swear it's him. And who's that lady that's hugging his arm? <laughs> Are you actually serious? Oh, he is! But wait! Oh. <laughs> Ooh, sly dog. Didn't forget it in him. Respect. That's a pretty snazzy hotel they're walking into. What's the scoop there, I wonder? They might be doing a dance in no pants, though, Jim. <gasps> and the van's like, my work here is done. I've just ruined her day. Let's go. Just wait a second. <laughs> Not sure why you're hounding me. Can you be looking into Dingo? I know, I know, I need your help with him. You specialize in investigations, right? You're all like, sneaky and stealthy and stuff. I am pretty amazing, We've, we know this, yes. Well, no, I ain't a detective. Why would I just tell a guy like that? <laughs> face. <laughs> Screenshot. I do, I do like Murray. She's like the one reporter I like. Oh, they're generally really annoying, but she's, a, she's awesome. Ah, uh, fine, I can stalk him. It's just innocent stalking. It's not a bad one. Ooh, yeah. Uh, what are they saying? I could barely hear them. Hence why I said we should get a bit closer. <laughs> well then, he'd spot us for sure. From my sneaking stealth experience, no, I think we'd be fine. Sorry for keeping you like that. Beauty in a suit. That she is, actually. You're very attractive. Everyone's attractive. We know this. 
I'm not a problem. I'm glad we were able to talk this out some more. I'll be back, you know. Huh? So what the heck were they talking about? They weren't breaking up, were they? That's not the vibe I got. <laughs> we now we're spotted. What? Or was it Dingo? That'd be funny. How long have you been there? How long have you two been there? D Dingo, uh, um, well, told you he knew from the start. Oh, Mario. If she were better at her job, she'd be amazing. Dingo, who was that woman just now? Is she your... You know... Um, no, she's a colleague, Mario. She's on a selection committee for an award body. I am recording, yes? Good, good, good. We like to see it. Award body? Oh, don't tell me. Somebody got himself a Fulitzer, huh? Well, not quite. Yes, they've been bugging me about it for a while. Wait, the Fulitzer? Yes, it's based on the Pulitzer. Pulitzer Prize? Is that, is that a real thing? I don't know. You're in the running for the highest journalistic award in the land, and you didn't tell anybody? What for? Why, why are you trying to be so secretive about it? My god, you really can't be secret. Quiet, Mario. <laughs> Damn, my stupid phone. Who could be. Yes, you're in chief. Now? Hello. Oh, God. Yes, fine. I'll be there. Jeez. Well, sir, please. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, all right. I'll be there in a bit. Out. <laughs> They, don't, they tell you to stop running around and start doing your job. Of all the stinking times, I'm holding you to this dingo. You better fess up next time. Well, that was that was a explosive. Looks like you got your hands full these days. She's eccentric. I'll leave it at that. He means weird, but I like it. But damn, nice job in the Felicia knob. I had no idea they were reaching out to you about that. Though now that I think about it. When the music stopped, it's not good. I guess you were a kind of a shoo in You were on the ground for the war, if I recall. Yep, I remember running into you once or twice. You were on the Mirage side. But you still lent us a hand from time to time. I laugh if Van was actually in Cold Steel 4. Just incognito, we didn't know, that'd be funny. I had comms with all of Calvary's media outlets at the time. The Royal Guardian, the Tyrell Times, we name it. I even branched out to some international outlets. I was chasing the truth behind it all. Everything else be damned. I put a lot of stuff together from a bunch of different sources. So I guess they wanted to recognise that. I heard you were up on the front lines when the fighting broke out, snapping photos of the battle. Yeah, that was a pretty epic, massive war that ended in like an hour, but it was epic. Now, I love the build up. It's like a five minute dum, 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 build up. And then they all just charge each other and just pull it together. Like, it was epic. I love it. Awesome. The reality of war, those outlets called it. You were anonymous at the time, but I had a feeling it was you. Blew everyone away. That's the thing, it wasn't just me. I can't accept that award in good faith that it means putting down everyone else. I'd hope they'd just leave me be if I kept running long enough. But nope, here they are in Edith. I get that, but come on, don't say yourself sure. You risked your life out there to get those photos. Somebody's got to be recognised for that, and it might as well be you. Plus, you accept that award and it gives you a platform. You can thank them all how you want. Oh my god, brain. You can thank them all you want once your articles start selling like hotcakes. Nah, still don't feel right. I don't think I'd be that big. No, old Dingo Brad is still a two-bit gossip rag reporter. That's all I'm ever going to be, and all I ever want to be. I mean, sure, I guess. It's your life and all. You let that whole nearest bit slip a little when you watch over that new girl, though. Just a heads up. That's rich coming from you. You act all tough, but then you ferry all your part-timers around like some kind of mother hen. Big old sock. It's true, I do. I do look at them. I, I literally call them my family. Unironically, I actually do look at them like that. That's not me trying to make a funny joke. I actually do think, oh, you actually look at them like that. Especially Fairy, okay? Yes. Oh, well, I guess you've got a point. There's nothing wrong with training her up as an apprentice. <laughs> Don't need to give it a cool spin, just justify it. Nothing wrong with doing you. With doing you. Just as long as we don't make fools of ourselves in front of the young'uns. <laughs> Bud, you're on the right side of 25. You are a young. Thank you! Dingo has shot up my list of favourite characters. He's the first one that's finally told us that 24 isn't old, okay? But yeah, we just gotta keep moving forward, you know? Thank you. 24 is not old. Van bid Dingo farewell and return to his work. Always room for improvement for us role models. We are a role model. I am a role model as well, as you can clearly tell. Van's... Okay, I was gonna say that was Dingo. No, Van's strength plus five. Ooh, I like that. The blind lady killer. 
as well always as always well done van good job good job me boom and that will be the end of this episode it feels weird saying that for a video that i've already done but yes i'll see you guys in the next one if you like what you saw feel free to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you in the forest pg mission which traumatized me actually and i regret everything i did, I did about it and i feel terrible um i actually still feel bad and i'm gonna sleep depressed uh yeah so you got that to look forward to it's always nice isn't it anyway yeah, i'll see you guys in the next one charles <laughs>